Now the first thing you'll notice is the horrible muddy mess over here. That seems to be the best video I can come up with. There's still something very wrong with the contrast code that I haven't figured out yet. Uh, the second thing is that I took the lid off and did some circuit tracing and I've managed to identify a number of interesting chips. One of which is the touchscreen controller and all this port F, port K stuff that is happening when the contrast is being set does seem to be talking to the touchscreen controller which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to be honest. I've got the data sheet somewhere, not that one. Uh, it's this, and it has a bit of information about the control mode, and I don't really see anything particularly relevant to contrast generation so unless it's happening as a byproduct of something else I'm not sure what's going on there but let's ignore that for now instead let's work on the keyboard the keyboard is the other interesting thing there are do you remember ages ago when I was I first opened this thing up there was a mysterious chip that I thought was a 8k flash chip well I was right it was an 8k flash chip wrapped in a uh, can I get this full screen there we go wrapped in a ST 8-bit microcontroller this is the thing that is connected to the keyboard and this is in turn connected to the second SPI interface on the 68000. So in order to work the keyboard, we're going to have to talk to this chip and we've got no idea what it's programmed with. Luckily, I think we can avoid a lot of that if we go back to trusty old Ghidra and follows some of the relevant looking functions. We can see here disable key interrupts is uh, setting a bit in PD cell. So this is obviously the keyboard interrupt line. And uh, this scan basic palm keys. Well, the first thing it does is called this function which I am sure, well this, this is bit banging various things and then setting up the second SPI interface. So I reckon that this is resetting the, uh, the ST microcontroller with some kind of parameter, zero in this case. So uh, probably we can just copy all this code. Uh, so I think what this does is resets the microcontroller and sends a command in. Then it uh, sets up the SPI interface. Uh, SPI data two. It is that is reading a, a word from the SPI interface. Ah, here's the one I was looking for. So this sends a zero to the SPI interface, which will, of course, it clock in a another byte of data, which is coming out here. My suspicion, and this is based on a suspicion and nothing else, is that this is an incredibly simple device. And what you do is you wait for a interrupt to arrive and then you clock out a random byte and you clock in a scan code from the keyboard. It does seem to be doing several things and there's in turn these subroutines 
this just maps what I believe to be scan codes to modifier keys. Uh, this does basically the same. So this would seem to be basically everything we need. Uh, trap A249 here, I have the list of traps. That is a hardware delay uh, specified in uh, this number here, specified in some kind of device uh, agnostic intervals because I also found the hardware delay function in fact there seem to be two of them and what this is doing is it's counting well it does computation based on the parameter there and then it counts PLL ticks based on the computed value so this is just cal calculating the number of ticks. I can do that. And yeah, you see, we read the PLL value and then we keep reading it until this bit changes and then we go around again. So we can probably also replicate the uh, delays as well. But first, let's go back to the keyboard init code uh, there may also be a enable key interrupt so let's go and look for that search for key interrupts in memory got this string here yep there it is so Again, all that is doing is uh, setting, it is clearing the PD bit. Uh, this subroutine, which is quite big, is called private get new key states. So I'm going to bet that this is the thing that gets executed when an interrupt happens that reads the the list of changed keys from the microcontroller. So if we disassemble here, stick that in as a label and turn it into a function. So configure SPI2. Uh, this, this could be chip select to the microcontroller. Uh, Clock out a zero byte, start the exchange, read the value, uh, keep looping until something happens, uh, undo chip select, then why would we be reading another bit? Um, I suspect that this could be uh, oh wait no hang on this hasn't read data this is this is checking the bit in the control register to see whether the uh, transaction has completed then we read the uh, the byte and the, the, this controller also has a FIFO on it so this will read uh, I was going to say this will read multiple bytes but of course that's not true because we have to clock out one byte for every byte we want to read so this has read one byte has anything happened then this code is handling changed key presses 
and this is a249 not that's a delay not a very big delay it's probably getting more data So what are these functions it's calling? This one? Do we have a name? Oh, it's our old friend again. And then this one's going to be, yep. As I said, there seem to be multiple copies of all of these things in the ROM. Very odd. So check the basic keys, check the extra keys. Do this. Key manager assemble, assembly. Uh, put the parameter in D0, move D0 to SR. This is probably changing uh, the interrupt mask bit. This one is hub state changed. And I've no idea what it, what Palmos means by a hub. That's not a USB hub. This one. I th think. Right, I believe that this is, I believe the SPI controller is responsible for a whole bunch of hardware and this is all coming in at once. Hopefully we can ignore a lot of it. And is this a function? It looks roughly like code. Now, this is more of our code. A249, that's a NOP. See, there's quite a lot of this happening. Here's another thing, this one's poking lots of I.O. ports and SPI stuff, lots of delays. Oh, it's this again. I, I think we're looking at a different copy of uh, all these routines. So why would this be resetting the microcontroller? Well, who knows, to be honest. Uh, it's If this value uvar8 is less than 8, and I bet uvar8 is what we got from the control register, not the data register. This is the date. This variable's got the date data in it. So probably, okay, well, let's uh, go and look up some of the, um, some of these registers. Let's be, 
SBI Cont 2. Here we are. So this one, Disk's uh, controller is rather different than the other one. Uh, the other one has got separate transmit and receive registers. This just has a general data register, which if you write to it, it pushes stuff on top of the transmit FIFO, and if you read from it, you get it from the read FIFO. And also, uh, the enable disable module bit has to be set before you set anything else. It says somewhere in the documentation. Here we go. You must enable the enable bit before you can change any other bits. So we'll probably find code for that. Uh, so if the value we read back is less than 8, but that's going to... Um, values from 0 to 7 uh, just this bit count register that makes very little sense is the okay I believe it's actually reused uvar7 for something else here yes it has I don't know what WVAR1 is, but... Okay, well, I think the first thing to do is to... Well, uh, the first thing to do is you notice that this thing is displaying the gem desktop just. Uh, and we're not going to bother with that, so let's just rebuild that without the AES, reset, and write. Meanwhile, over here, we want to find the reset code. Let's find the other one, this one, because this one we've filled out the uh, the trap so it decompiles moderately correctly and let's start mapping some of these bits uh, actually let's do this one first so here's our documentation for what the various bits do and uh, what this is doing is it's setting this pin to be a GPIO, which means it won't trigger any interrupts. So that is bit five. No, it's not, it's bit four. And this is set to by default. Yeah, okay, OX10. Oh. So uh to enable interrupts we turn this into a GPIO bit and then the interrupt fires. Okay, well that's finished writing, so let's run it. The screen comes on, and you should be able to just make out the uh, the prompt. So, uh, yeah, I was mapping this stuff. Uh, 
Okay, so it's using mostly port K and B. K is here. B is B cell six zero uh oh one one oh So it is particularly interested in uh, FB is 1011. So yes, this is port 4, but a bit, yeah. That's port K, that's this bit here. Uh, port B, this is touching this bit, but who knows what for. Then we set up the SPI controller to a nice hard-coded value, which means it's easy to look up. 2200. Uh, that's 0010. So that is running at 6 o'clock by 8. Uh, 0010. So we enable it with no exchange. And the other bits are 0. Right, that, as the documentation said, it's setting the enable bit first. 2307, 2011, that's starting a transfer. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1 for the bit count is 8 bits. So that's telling it to transfer a byte, which in this case is the zero that it's just pulled here. Okay. So this is going to be, just thinking about where to put it in the code. So I would put it here, but as the vectors are initialized after then, we probably shouldn't. Uh, SBI here has got to do with the SD card. I suppose if this is going, mostly going to be the keyboard, we're going to need some keyboard routines. So... Is there any init code? Uh, this module also seems to work with mouse. And of course, I don't know where that's coming from yet. Called by the interrupt routine for key events. Do I actually want any of this code? What do the other platforms do? Uh, let's go for the Amiga. Amiga keyboard in it. Okay, that seems plausible. Okay. Machine Dana. Dana keyboard in it. Where else is Amiga stuff happening? Caps lock management? Uh, 
Dana I keyboard right B. Okay, just those two places. Done that. We want a keyboard in it. Um, okay, that is does not have an I on the keyboard. However, this in okay and in this code we want Dina keyboard in it now what are we going to do well, we need to we need to go to the data sheet and look up port K and figure out what these pins are. Because it could be that these are the SPI2 pins and it's using GPIO bit banging to reset the controller before handing them off to the uh, GPIO module. No, apparently they're not. They're just GPIO bits. So, reset line maybe? I would expect there to be a reset line and a uh, chip select line. So the, the other one is in port B. Uh, this one, T in, T out, timer input or output. So I don't think that's anything we care about. So that's another GPIO. There's a delay there. Um, the other one we wanted was... Oops. Uh, port... D for the interrupt. I have too many windows open. So this is put D is the one with all the interrupts on it. And This is on the wrong workspace, that's why I get confused. Uh, bit 4 is IRQ1. So go to the interrupt controller, it's external interrupt level 1. So I believe that what we need to do here is Set this to a interrupt handler. Uh, 
and we are going to have to clear the interrupt uh, because this does not get cleared automatically and oh yeah also figure out the polarity control stuff okay Dana, uh, Dana in it here this is IBR is not set in the, my init script so we do want to set it ourselves I think uh, IBR is the interrupt vector we don't want to care about that it's this one we care about we need to set the polarity control to the right thing unmask it here Okay, during interrupt service, the handler determines the source of interrupts by examining ISR. When the bits in this register are set, they indicate that the corresponding interrupt is posted to the core. In other words, uh, that's when reading. When programmed as edge triggered interrupts, these can be cleared by writing a 1. So we in fact need to find out whether this is an edge triggered interrupt, this bit here or if it's a level triggered. I'm hoping it's level triggered because they are much more sensible and less problematic in every possible way. Uh, I'm looking for not that window, that window. Okay. Interrupt control register is here. Where is this being set from? Hardware RAM in it. This is setting these bits. All right, that's just enabling the timer, I think. Uh, what's this function? Hardware sleep. So I'm probably going to guess that hardware wake enables these things. Again, that is only setting this bit, which is pole 6, IRQ 6. So maybe 0 is already the right value. Oh, this is doing something. Ah, EFF, F, yes, that is, that is clearing the same bit. And BOE is a register that I never got round to actually looking up. BOE is RTC ISR. And it's a word. So that's not actually being set in very many places. We've got hardware wake, which is not touching that particular register. We've got hardware in it, which is not touching that register. Yeah, whatever is on, I think that whatever is on uh, IRQ6, we need to care about. Oh, I know what's on IQ6 because we've done that one. It's this one. It's the timer. So 
So should we have set this to be edge level? I think we should have. So where are we setting up the timer? Here. No, we're not. No, we're not. Uh, because the timer, the timer arrives on that vector, but it is not IRQ six. It's uh, this is a external interrupt coming from something else on the system, and we don't know yet what that is. Interrupt polarity for the IRQ6 signal. It's all mixed up with the PLLs, I have to say. Well, the system seems to work without it, so let's ignore that for the time being. Okay, so let's assume that this is all we need. So, we go over here to our interrupt code. Push. Critical registers onto the stack. Call Dana. Uh, I keyboard interrupt pop our registers back and return so I think that is our interrupt handler Also need to enable the interrupt. This was IRQ one. So this isn't touching IMR anywhere. Well, we're going to want this eventually, so so that will cause the interrupt to trigger immediately. Let me just check what this is wired to. Uh, bit for IRQ1. I'm not sure why we have ints and IRQs. Interrupt bit, interrupt request bits. Int signals are all level 4, IRQ has its own levels, so this is going to be IRQ1. This is a very weirdly complicated interrupt controller. Uh, 
Okay, so IRQ1 is bit 16. Is there anything else we need? I don't think there is. Okay. Now that isn't going to do anything because we have yet to reset our uh, microcontroller. So that's this code. So what is it doing? It's easier to follow in the assembly actually. Is a biggish loop. So if this is the command. This is, uh, that's a loop counter. Right, we keep pinging the microcontroller until it's ready. And then if it's this command, then we do some stuff. Otherwise, we don't do anything. Now, the only time I've ever seen this thing being called is uh, with a zero as the parameter. So this more of these weird timing things. Um, a, as I said, A two four nine is hardware delay. So what it seems to be doing is this chunk of code is trying to reset the microcontroller. Then we read a particular bit to see whether it's ready or not. If it's not ready, we do some more resetting, go around again. If it is ready, we do this setup. And I think there's some more bits we care about here. So uh, PK4 is, okay, we do have that one. B four zero, yep. But this this code is somewhat mystifying. So why is that adjusting the stack pointer? Hmm.
so this is setting the bit then resetting it then delaying I am going to guess that that is the reset bit then there's a delay then we jump to the end of our loop and go up here and do it again right so this is uh 1011 so this is uh we clear the bit set it to a gpio set it back to a dedicated function but port k doesn't do anything Uh, that's bit three of port K. Uh, bit two of port K, which is LDS, which is a RAM thing. What's LDS? This looks like a RAM thing. There we are, PK th PK2, value 4, LDS. Data strobe signals. These pins default to GPIO inter input pulled high. Yeah, this this is all to do with the uh, the system bus. So why would they be unsetting it? So here we read the bit we check to see whether it is set or not okay that looks weird but straightforward so let's hash out a bit of code what we're going to do is Reset the controller, see if it's ready. In a loop. So to reset the controller, we are going to, uh, I'm getting PK deer and PK cell mixed up. PK cell is the one that sets uh, whether it's a GPIO pin or a dedicated uh, function pin. PK dear is the one that configures whether it's input or output. That makes much more sense. So. So what this is doing is clearing the value
setting it to be a whatever it is. If we're going to read it, it's. I'm going to say that I'm going to guess that that is blah, is setting it to an output. Uh, PKD one output. Now, hang on. This isn't reset. This is ready. This is all actually happening here. We're doing our code in a slightly different order. So this will cause the pin to be driven down for a short period. Uh, we should probably figure out how long these intervals are. We then set it to be an input several times. Then we read it. If it's zero, then it's not worked. If it's non zero, then we have successfully reset the microcontroller. Okay, so now the reset logic is this bit here. We're always going to go through the reset logic at least once, unlike this code. That's on PB. which is bit six. So this code is Set it, reset it, wait. So uh, then we also need another delay here. So I think that is the bulk of our code. But we need to add some EK gear is four forty. Uh, ED cell is four one B. Uh, 
Uh, really, I M R is model interrupt mask register. I M R is a thirty-two bit value. Yep. Okay, so that builds. So let's uh, let's figure out some of these delays so that the the reset delay is a three e eight. It's this one. This is short. Already test. This is three two. Ah, that's why the code works like this. Uh, if the value we get back from the controller after initialization isn't right, then we reset it and start again. I did wonder. Oh, look, there's another bit. Port E. Uh, Bit three of port E and port E is set to two hundred. That's not a correct value. Uh, Pre-init, hardware pre-ram in it. This is where all these things are set. So, oh, uh, right, uh, it's just, I cut and pasted from this. So that should be C8. Uh, C is one one o o one o o o. So the ST microcontroller bit is a GPIO from the start, which is there, which is nice. So let's leave that off. So we'll leave the interrupts disabled. This will just uh, run through the reset procedure and see if it actually responds at all. Okay. Uh, hardware delay, right. Now, uh, this is the delay in some units or other. This is converting, uh, this, this is a division. So what that's doing is dividing by 256, uh, adding on divided by 16, adding on divided by 16, Is that actually, do I have my precedence correct? C 
So delay is in D1. D1 to Z0. Shift right. Add D0. Take the original value, shift by 8, add to D0, shift the result by 4, Uh, D, D6 is the resulting ticks value. I wish you could rename variables over here without renaming the registers over here because it's not helping. Registers are frequently reused, even if Gidra thinks it's a register variable. Okay, so this shift is shifting the result. So therefore, what we've got is uh, x divided by 256 plus x, uh, plus x divided by 16 plus x divided by 16. Uh, so To remember how to do my uh, maths. Uh, yes, of course, this is x times two five six plus sixteen plus one. So this is two five six times sixteen plus two equals x times x plus sixteen plus one, which is four nine six t times two seven three x. Therefore. Ticks is two seven three over four nine six times x. Which is not a terribly interesting looking number. Oh, it's 15 inverted. So I think that is just t equals x divided by 15. Right, and that makes sense given it this, because uh, 15 whatever these are is the smallest amount you can delay, that will turn into one tick. So anything less than that, it just falls through. 
Okay, so PLLF's FSR is it's looking at bit fifth. This is not the right register. Here we go. Clock 32. The bit switches with each cycle of clock 32. What is clock 32 connected to? I have no idea. It's not the system clock, I don't think. It's the 32 kilohertz clock. So each tick is uh, bit switches with each cycle. Is that a complete round trip of high to low? Ah, oh, here we go. No, it's it's just a simple oscillation. Uh, it's simply wired up to the clock signal. So at 32 kilohertz, this means that going from low to high and back to low again, that is waiting for two transitions is one thirty-tooth of a, well, it's uh, 32.768 kilohertz. So, half of that is twice a 64 kilohertz. So here you can see an example where 31 periods of the clock is one millisecond. If we're dividing by 15, that suggests half a millisecond. But why would this delay be in uh, half milliseconds? It would make much more sense for this to be a millisecond delay and I just realized that over here in my web browser I actually have the Palmos SDK so I can actually go look at the headers is there a hardware I can search it hardware delay microseconds uh, that does say one millisecond Well, I am going to believe the documentation. Uh, we can't wait for microseconds. We can wait for milliseconds. But let's just stick in a Uh, I wonder if I got this wrong. It's quite possible. It's been a very long time since I've done elementary algebra. So this line we multiply by 16. 
or you know let's just feed it into this and see what comes out That, I believe, is about 1 15th. OK, it is dividing the value by 15. I was right. That's amazing. So we divide the tick value by 16. Let's make this a U long while ticks uh, U word PLL equals PLL FSR while uh, PLL. PLL FSR and um, there's a race condition here. If the PLL flips over between this read and this read, then I think you'll lose a tick. Okay. So this is a short delay. This is a longer delay. What is 3E8 in decimal? It's a, it's a bloody millisecond. <laughs> oh, I should have done that a while ago. Uh, This was 32. Okay. So, has our what has our delay turned into? Oh, hang on. Did I actually do that right? Yes, I did. Good grief, that's actually calling a divide routine. Don't think that should be doing that. Okay. This, this code is all L's, so that is basically the same thing. All right, now let's try running it and see what happens. Okay. Okay, so what do we get? Nothing. Right, this happened last time. Uh, we have enabled KDebug here, but I am not convinced it's actually going anywhere without more configuration. Yeah. 
Here we are, Dana Debug Print. Uh, Is that being compiled? Yes. Is that being compiled? Yes. Uh, I think it's hitting this and failing. That is, it's uh, it's bailing out here and never actually printing anything. Um, I think I do not want console debug print set. I don't think it does what I thought it did. I think that what this does. goes to the BIOS console. But that's set to a zero. So that is not actually being executed. So in fact we can simply Disassemble this EK printf is inlined so in fact he's going straight to out C Dana RS232 out C Dana uh, no, no. It's gone to what has that actually done? So it is okay, it has called do printf. Uh, this push here should have pushed k printf out c dana rs232. It should have pushed this. This goes to rs232 write b. Which is here. which sends the byte. Interesting. Well, I think... Given that it seems to work with serial console set, let's try with this and see if we get any more tracing. Okay, execute. Hmm. Suspicious. I'm not quite sure what of. I'm just generally suspicious. Let's try turning this on as well. I 
Okay, and what does this do? Still nothing. You see, I'm pretty sure that this is similar configuration to what I was using before. Have I enabled debug there? Yes, I have. We're not getting any of these messages either. do printf well, what have I changed since last time Looks all quite reasonable to be honest. Okay, well, I know this was working at some points in the past. So... Let's take a look at previous versions. Uh, 7476, let's go for 7473. because that was a known working configuration. Okay, I was like, taking a bit of a shortcut there. Let's do that properly. Also, I don't remember whether I actually remembered to do a make clean. That could well be the problem. And we're ending up with a inconsistent build. Okay, and execute. That's better. Okay, so we reset the the uh the microcontroller, it said it was ready. So now we want to set up the SPI stuff. Uh, reset this one, which is this code. So the first thing we do is we wait for 1B58. It 
Seven thousand microseconds. And we then uh, do something with port E. I bet port E is chip select. that down oops as b i Spin data two equals zero. Uh, SPI point two equals two two o two three o seven. Uh, we then want to wait until. This bit is clear. Uh, exchange, yep. Wait. Eight zero. That's not the exchange bit. Eight zero is the IRQ bit. This bit is set when an exchange is finished. Okay. Remains as certain as cleared. Okay. So we want to wait until it's finished. We then uh, raise CS and it'll be active low, which is why raising it disables it. Uh, and then we get a uh, This will probably be fine. Uh, if uh, if the microcontroller said a A finish. Okay. And of course we need more registers. Getting quite a collection here to be honest. So SPI cont two is a word at eight oh two. SBI data two is a word at eight oh P 
PE data is a byte at I'm going to guess it's uh, 423 No, it's not. I should point out that while I was setting up to do this particular session, I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out why the initial gem image wouldn't run. And then I tried, you know, firing up Parmos, and that wouldn't run either. And it didn't do anything, and the backlight wouldn't come on, and it, uh, and so on. Until I eventually I realized that I had... Does you might work? Yep. Uh, that I'd taken the thing apart in order to trace lines. And when I put it back together again, I had forgotten to plug the screen and keyboard in. So, yes, this I think that these videos are containing more incompetence than usual. Okay, and we execute. Well, we're getting three A's and three B's. What happens if I type? Nothing seems to be changing. Three A, three B, three B, three B, three B, three A, three B, three B, three B, three B. Is it always? No, it's kind of random. Uh, did I miss some weights? Yeah, there is one there. So this is testing the exit bit and jumping up to the top where it tries to ping the board again. Uh, so it doesn't reset it. If, if this condition fails, it doesn't reset the microcontroller, it just prods it and sees whether it responds. And only if it doesn't respond does it reset. Let's try changing our code to be the same model
Um, I think I've got my select backwards again. IO port function in. Yep, I got my select backwards again. That won't help. And PE cell is four two three. Okay. Okay, and now we execute it, and, well, it's different. So the controller is always ready, and it's always saying 39. So here, if the command is EC, then we do the same thing as before. We clock out the uh, a zero. We get back uh, shouldn't this be, if the command is EC, shouldn't we be sending the command at some point? But we on no hang on here's the command which is zero Oh, good grief, I'm an idiot. Yeah, um, I think this, yeah, this is not my best work. Okay, let's try reading it from the right register this time. I'm not sure if, you know, mistakes like that are something that I that I just generally do and don't think anything of it because I correct them or whether uh, uh that is unless I'm actually narrating it like this in which case it becomes more obvious that I've screwed things up or whether I'm making unusually more of these at the moment. Okay, and now let's run it and see what it does. Fantastic. Look, the controller's awake. We are now talking to the keyboard controller. So let's lose this tracing messages. Let's wire up the interrupt handler. And inside the interrupt handler, what we are going to do is Do a transaction and see what the controller said. So 
So I'm hoping here that if I type, I will see scan codes show up. They're probably, I don't know whether the, uh, the messages are going to be multi-byte, but we should be able to actually check that by doing Scan basic palm keys. Okay, so we reset the microcontroller. We send a zero. But a zero is an AA. Maybe we only get the AA the first time. I mean, if you send a zero, you get back an AA. Maybe you only get the AA the first time the microcontroller uh, wakes up, just to say that it's ready. And then you get scan codes. So it's, we seem to be getting W var one and it's then setting bits in the return parameter, I think, to tell you what it maybe what kind of event it is. And then we read another byte. Yeah, I think that's how it works. Okay, let's execute this and see what it does. It may just spam us with gibberish. Mm, zeros. Okay, let's... Oh-ho! Right. I am going to guess that this is a sequence of key pressed command and then the scan code. Uh, what happens if I press more than one key at a time? Well, that's kind of slowed things down a bit. Okay, well, I uh, just hold down, let's say, H and then click Control C, and we got. Well, random bytes. Uh, however, we are getting a steady stream of bytes, which means that the microcontroller is always, always has the interrupt line set. So do we have to tell it that we've finished? I've noticed here it's turning the inter in, turning the SBI module off after it's finished. So this appears to be a single scan. This is it's a it's a pull system. You call this function, it then talks to the microcontroller and gets results back. What we want is interrupt based uh, is an interrupt based system where it tells us when it's got something to say. So prove enable int is called from no that's the wrong one. We want keyboard keyboard table uh, um, 
what was that called? Reset. Uh, drive open, check extra palm keys. Scan basic palm keys. Uh, and one difference between... Oh yes, scan is... Here we go. Disable keyboard interrupt. And we wanted enable keyboard interrupts. Enable key. Enable key. Right, I forgot to name this. So there it is as a function. Unfortunately, Gidra can't find anywhere it's been called from. So, memory search. Is there another one somewhere? Uh, ah, keep putting the mouse in the wrong window. Proof, enable, key, search all. One place, okay. And we don't know where it's called from. That's not helpful. Ah, but there is this function that we found above it is very big function get new key states okay let's let's rework some of these traps they're all delays F1, that's a new one. Okay, so uh, and I will also take the opportunity to clear all the parameters because I think most of these are bunk. Uh, maybe not. Well, yeah, we are getting some. Four, eight, C, and ten. Those are four pointers. Does it know where this is called from? No. Okay, well... So we are... Here's our usual exchange where we send a zero and get back a value. We then look at the various bits in the parameter that we got to see what it is. And depending on what they are, we do a number of different things. What's this? Uh, unnamed helper function. Uh, let's call that... No, hang on, this is uh, 
This is disabling the interrupts and returning the old interrupt state. There's a delay. This is reading bytes from the keyboard controller. This is writing something. PBVAR10 is IVAR4, which is in turn a pointer to something. Uh, looking at what it's used for. Where is it? Where did it go? Here we go. So PBVAR10 is figured out that it's a byte variable. So therefore, this must also be a byte variable. Did I do the right thing there? Byte star. No, I think. IVAR4. Yes. This is a byte star. Why is that not changing? Interesting. Well, so Ah, this is doing a reset oh, with a zero. Uh, this is the other implementation of reset st with command. I'm hope I was hoping to see something in here about clearing the interrupt line, but I don't. Uh, you know, like writing out a particular card coded value to the to SBI data two. Unless now there we here we have this is reading keys. Okay, so keyboard in it, uh, PD cell is OX10. Have I got my select backwards again? IO port function pins are connected. Wait, wait. We want that to be a dedicated function pin. Yeah. Let's see what this does. Okay, and 
and run uh, zeros so that hasn't helped so this interrupt keeps firing why does it keep firing it's possible that the uh, one zero is cell four, which is should be this one. Yeah, data bit four, IRQ one. Do I need to tell it it's a level rather than an edge? Because if it's an edge, then uh, it will keep asserting until we mask it. So zero is a interrupt request edge register. P D I R Q E G. Let's take a quick look here. P D I R Q E G is used it is written to and uh, we're writing a zero. So that's setting it to be level. Are we updating it anywhere else? This bit this here. is where are we anyway SPI open oh right this was setting up the uh, the SDIO cards uh, this is clearing the top four bits including one of the ones we're interested in so they are level sensitive Okay, so IRQEN port interrupt request enable. Yeah, the same thing is happening here. So that's setting it to a zero. Oh no, these are for the low bits. Yeah, because the, the top four are for the are for IRQ one to four. The bottom four are for int one to four. Bizarre. And that is clearing the bottom four bits. Okay. PD polarity is clearing the bottom four bits. Are they being set anywhere? Yes, they are. To a zero. Oh, these only work for the, the int ones anyway. Pull-ups? Do we need pull-ups? Uh, it seems to think we need pull-ups for the int IRQs, but not the the other ones. Ah, we do need pull-ups, but that should be set. EDP U and one F, yeah. That's done in our script. I'm uh, just going to have a, another quick look at the documentation for the interrupt controller. whether they do actually need to be cleared. Yep, 
interrupt status. The software handler, okay, may need to prioritize them. Uh, External interrupts int. IOQ 1, 2, 3, and 6 can be cleared when programmed at level triggered interrupts. These interrupts are cleared at requesting sources. So the microcontroller should be clearing them. Well, let's just try this anyway. So that would be. Clear that. Uh, bit 16 is IRQ1. Did you know that this system on a chip actually has built in keyboard controller support? Which they're not using. I think because there just aren't enough lines for it. I think you have to use all the D registers. I suspect that uh, when they say keyboard, they mean very small keypad. So when we run it, still nothing. Okay, that didn't help. Interesting. Uh, do I need to... See, maybe the interrupt, maybe the microcontroller uses the interrupts for something else. I know what we can do. So that will set the, uh, the interrupt line to a GPIO. So that will just spin dumping the contents of PD data. So we should be able to see the, if it is an interrupt line, we should be able to see it go up and down. Uh, PD data, actually, I don't think that will, that's unlikely to work now I think of it. The reason is that the microcontroller will assert the interrupt line and uh, we'll keep it asserted until we uh, read all the data. Is our interrupt handler wrong? That doesn't look complicated. I don't think there's any way we can get into an infinite loop there. Just trying various keys. They all do the obvious things. See, we could... One thing we could do is, in the timer handler, we ping the uh, keyboard controller to see if it's got anything to say, so that we poll it rather than relying on the interrupts. Uh, the that should work. It's not brilliant. Do we actually have the right interrupt line? EF, yeah, that is... the right... 
interesting. Interesting. Uh, the keyboard controller is going to be quite complicated inside, and we can tell by, you know, the size of some of this piece of some of this code, and all the stuff it's doing, that uh, it does quite a lot. So here we go. There's, here's the the new key state thing. So it's possible that we're there's just something I don't know that I need to do to clear the interrupt lines. So I think the best thing to do is to pull it instead. That's a shame. Never mind. So what we're going to do is here is our five millisecond uh, vector. Uh, we are I wonder, is there a better way to do this? So we could just put a call in here to call our interrupt handling routine. However, uh, there's this complicated system where it goes out to the to another piece of code. Uh, this. And there is some cold fire code in there and some stuff to do with repeat keys. See, it's already saved the registers we want, so... Int timer C. Dana JSR uh, Dana Paul keyboard That's the second time I've made that mistake. Okay. So in this piece of code and I will actually I think factor this stuff out. Okay, so So what we're going to do is loop uh ST send receive zero if not be break otherwise do that this is all happening from an interrupt handler so we should not be calling kdebug but let's just roll with it for now
Accessing the individual pins is very irritating because they are all uh, they're all on different ports, and all the ports are volatile. So you have to manually handle reading and writing multiple bits in multiple different ports, and it's all ghastly. I did originally think of using, here we go, um, bit fields for them. But the problem with bit fields is that you end up setting uh, and reading them one at a time. And because the registers are volatile, that means each one turns into an individual read or write, which again is not right. Okay, so we run it. Right, we got back... Oh, no, I haven't done anything yet. Let's press a key. 4118. 4118, 4118, 40. That was an H. Let's try a J. 4128, 4128, Let's press H and J. Uh... For two one eight two eight, so H is one eight, J is two eight. So four one is clearly keys have been pressed and the bottom bits are telling us how many keys. So that's two keys, we see four two, three keys. Four four followed by four bytes. Uh, that could be rollover issues due to the keyboard matrix. Okay, let's try Shift, A, and Control. So Shift is 09, A is 2B, Shift and A, 42092 b Shift and A and Control, 43, 092B7B. Right. We can work the keyboard. So the Where are we? Here we go. So the first byte tells us whether it's a keyboard command or not. And we can see that happening in the Parmos code. Here we are reading and writing. Okay, if it's not zero, just give up. As this is happening 200 times a second, we want it to be as fast as possible. Yeah, um... Doing the send and receive is, we are waiting for the microcontroller. I'd much rather use interrupts, but you know. Okay, uh, we are writing to I, to structure in IVAR8 what the thing was. If the top bit is set, then The remaining seven bits are uvar seven, which becomes bvar twelve. This is hub management. What does this do? This turns interrupts off. No, it doesn't. Uh, That this sets SR. And UVAR4, where was that set? Here. Disable interrupts. Okay. So this is putting interrupts back on again. 
calling prove hub state change, whatever that is, and then we exit. If it's not a hundred, we do much the same thing. Yeah, I don't know what the, what a hub is in this context. And this is checking various other states of things with the top bit set, none of which I know what they are. And here we are reading bytes and doing transfers and stuff. But we want to get to here. If this bit is set, right, if this bit is set, if this bit is also set, give up now. If more than eight bits are set, something's gone wrong, so reset the microcontroller. Otherwise, we fall out the bottom and read keys. OK, so let's refactor this as well. Uh, we can't do that from inside a interrupt handler. Well, let's just pretend it doesn't happen. So if opcode and ox40 keyboard command If opcode and OX10 then give up. Otherwise uh, actually I just Oh, four zero. Ah, right. It's reporting the number of keys pressed with zero meaning no keys pressed. So it's not giving us key up, key down events. This means we're going to have to keep track of what keys are pressed. Though I still don't, I don't know yet what the Atari wants. So. Take a look at how the Amiga does it. Okay, so it converts Amiga scan codes into Atari scan, code, scan codes. which apparently happens from machine code. Here. So... Oh, you, it gets the scan code, it looks it up in the table, and... D0 and it calls keyboard vex.
which is this structure. Do, do I need to handle key ups, key downs myself? Because what we're doing is we're emulating the Atari keyboard microcontroller. All right, what I was expecting was a Oh, keyboard int. I think we just need to call this. And yes, we do need to ha handle key ups, key downs. So where is keyboard int being called from? Ooh. Um, okay, right, this is to allow, uh, yeah, the Amiga stuff was calling this v via a vector so that things can, oh, that's useful. Here is what we actually need to send. Packet header determines the packet length. Nothing there on keyboard. Here are the keyboard vectors. Okay, let's take a look at that Amiga stuff again. Keyboard vec. Right, that is calling the uh, it's calling this keyboard vec. So That's not part of the keyboard vex structure. Keyboard vec. So I don't think we can get at it from C, which is interesting. The reference to underscore keyboard. Oh, that's what it's initialized to. So this is the vector structure. Right. Here are the things that go further, that go uh, before and after. Keyboard input toss greater or equal. This is the one we want to call. 
undocumented feature is called with the received data byte in D0 and a pointer to the I keyboard IO rec in A0. Ouch. Uh, that's tricky because we can't call that from C. Let's take another look at that Amiga stuff. Well, A0 is not the um, IO rec. Yeah, here it's initializing it. Oh dear, we should actually call that properly. Um, to remember how to do function pointers. I think that's right. So we want to uh, move, we want to load the value of keyboard vec into that register equals g uh, general register keyboard vec is that right does that compile mm. It needs to go there. Okay, I got my operands the wrong way round. That's specifying the output one. Uh, as and volatile is GCC's typically over-designed and incredibly complicated inline assembly thing. Right, keyboard vec is of course not exposed. So I think we do that. Okay. Right, what does that actually produce code wise? Uh, yes, that looks fine. Right, so we are going to be receiving a set of scan codes from the microcontroller. And we need to map these into what the Atari ST uses. But we need to send key up and key downs to the uh, to the rest of Atari TOS. And the keyboard controller on the Dana doesn't do that. It only tells us what keys we actually have. So we're going to have to keep track of what keys were pressed so that we can send key ups so we are going to uh,
we can have up to eight keys. get the order of parameters mixed up so I always look it up to be sure all right so we're going to be reading the keys into a a new buffer think we only know about the receive about the releases after we have uh, received all keys so we're going to end up with a new buffer and an old buffer so So this will read uh, so new keys is going to be a um, <clears throat> new keys is going to be the buffer containing well the new keys uh, and we read all the keys pressed from the microcontroller and stash them in there now we want to compare this against the currently pressed keys and decide whether they are set or not. I think there's a better way to do this. So this will receive a key code. We then If the key being pressed is already in the buffer, then we know it has remained pressed and we do nothing. By default, we assume that they're going to be pressed. So if we get here, delta is now going to be zero if it was pressed and we do nothing with it other than keep the buffer updated or one if it was just pressed. So this will track new keys. No, I'm gonna to have to put, a, put that buffer in Okay, so for, for every key in the old buffer, uh, 
Uh, is there a memory search? I think there is. true. I don't know if the Atari TOS kernel has it. So if If the key is not in the new pressed buffer, then this key has been released. So, released. Then we go through the new keys. If there are any new keys that aren't in the pressed key buffer, that key has just been pressed. And Oh, and of course, the last thing we need to do is to copy the key, the state over. So this is going to be ubyte scan code pool pressed. Keys undeclared. <laughs> Pressed keys. Actually, let's do it the other way around. Okay, we had, do not have a mem true. So to that. Do these both at the same time? Do not see any reason why not. Okay, well, let us try it and see what happens. Okay, so let's try this and okay, press a key. 
Uh. Well, that doesn't help. Uh. Is the system running? Yes, it is. So we're never getting to press release key. Let's just put some tracing in. not do that because I think I figured out something that's wrong when I went from memture to find key the sense of the return value changed okay let's try this okay and execute press key oh Okay, that doesn't look like it's doing anything useful. So our opcode was four, uh, four zero. Then we are falling through this piece of code. So this should be receiving bytes from the microcontroller. This is very much the same code as we would have doing before. Do I need to delay to let the microcontroller get stuff done? Let's just put lots of undos in. You see, we've got this in place, which is a delay. And in our get new key states. So somewhere down here, here we go, we are reading the keys. We are reading one byte. We're checking it for the stuff. And then we are delaying for 32 microseconds. Okay. Execute, press a key, and that's better. So, uh, it's 
Oh, yes, we want to... Scan code zero means nothing, so... Let's actually just put this in here. Scan code zero can never be found. So, 6878, 7A. However, holding them down causes them to be continually pressed and released. So I think my logic here isn't right. So, uh, so I just pressed one key and then a space. Interesting. Let's try this again. Space. So the key went down. Why is it showing up as pressed when keys pressed should be empty? It should be new but not pressed. Try M. Oh, this logic is bogus. Okay. So if uh, we ignore new keys that are zero, Hang on. Yeah, ignore zeros. If uh, the key is currently pressed and it is not present in the new set, release it. New keys. If K and if the key. Yeah, yeah, that was. Okay, that might work better. And let's also lose this tracing because it's slowing everything down. And I'm seriously running out of time, so I'm hoping this will work because then I can finish. Okay, to execute, press a key, brilliant. Okay, that's the keyboard working. It still needs to be wired up to the system. Uh, this is rote work. I need to map the keyboard and figure out what all the scan codes do uh, and do the put together a conversion table. But that is the keyboard working. We should be able to have a fully functional mouseless or command line based uh, Emu toss environment on this system. So let's just try shift uh, control 7b, shift is 9, a is 2b, let them all go at once. Three releases. Fabulous. So I'm going to go to bed now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments.